Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today for our detailed presentation on Student Affairs Sponsored Grants and Awards. My name is Whitney Hedgebetz and I'm Assistant Director in the Office of Graduate Student Life and Development who works most closely with our student grants and awards. I'm happy to relay to you a very detailed overview of everything that we offer and I encourage you to reach out should you have any further questions. So without further ado, let's dive in. Again, this presentation specifically covers all of the student grants and awards managed by the Office of Graduate Student Life and Development. When you're able to be on campus, please visit us in 155 Thorndike Hall. Or you can email us at studentaffairs at tc.edu. And again, my name is Whitney Hedgebeth and I'm an assistant director in the Office of Graduate Student Life and Development within the Division of Student Affairs. To begin, I just want to highlight our website, which is the address is listed at the top, www.tc.edu backslash OSA. And on the left hand navigation panel or column, you will see we have an option for grants, fellowships, and awards. If you click that, it will pop you out to very detailed sections uh, specific to each grant, award, and fellowship that we offer. Um, all of the information is also transposed and applications are available through your MyTC portal, which can be found at my.tc.edu under the student resources tab. And on the left hand column of your portal, you will see circled in red, TCSA student resources, specifically the top option, student life sponsored grants and awards. If you click that, you'll be directed to again, all of the details, including application links. So today we're going to cover um, the different grants, awards, and fellowship opportunities offered by Student Life. And we're going to specifically discuss the purpose, the eligibility criteria, deadlines, a reimbursement form, when you can expect your reimbursement, and for some, the review process for all grants and awards. So to begin, let's just talk briefly about the institutional eligibility requirement. And that states that students must be enrolled in a one billable credit or have a one credit certificate of equivalency or COE as it's commonly referred to for the given term of the award in order for the stipend to be released. Should you be awarded and you do not meet the aforementioned criteria, um, we can't release that stipend to you until enrollment is updated with the Office of the Registrar. So listed on the screen, you'll see the different grants and awards that we offer, one of which is the Provost Grant for Conference Presentation and Professional Development, which is what we're going to begin with. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, this grant has been suspended for fall 2020 and pending uh, future uh, college decision and travel restrictions, there may be potential that it will reopen for spring 2021, but right now, currently no applications will be accepted. But so you're aware, the purpose is that it's a student grant offering financial stipend or assistance uh, to help with the costs associated with presenting academic work or research at a professional organization or conference. And these stipends are to be utilized exclusively for the purposes of conference registration, affiliation or membership, printing and travel costs, excluding food and beverage. And the number of awards vary per year, but it is ultimately dependent upon annual funding. And there is only one stipend per academic year permitted um, with a maximum of a award of $500 for every student registered. There are three deadlines to be mindful of, and this follows the academic calendar. So basically it goes based on fall, spring, and summer terms. And you must um, submit your application during the term in which you are presenting. There's no exception to this. So if you're presenting your academic research in October, you would need to apply within the fall term. But again, you must be enrolled in that one billable credit or have a one credit COE on your record um, to be awarded for the for the money to be dispersed to you. The reimbursement form is a templated Excel spreadsheet created for ease and your use in tracking expenses. So traditionally when we uh, have an application for this, we require that you submit proof of attendance, like a, conference, a photo of a conference badge or a photo of you presenting your work. 
as well as original receipts. So this, this stipend comes in the form of a reimbursement. So you can access and download the form, download the form, I'm sorry, uh, directly through the bit.ly link provided. So that's bit.ly backslash TC reimbursement. And it's not mandatory, but it's highly encouraged that you follow this format because it's, it's very easy for you to use. And you can expect your reimbursement. Um, traditionally, applications and reimbursements are processed within one month of receipt. So you'll be notified in writing via email of your decision status. And again, applicants are encouraged to wait to apply until after their presentation as proof of attendance and receipts are required. So all students, again, are encouraged to set up direct deposit or e-refund for faster disbursement of stipends and funds. Moving right along, we're next going to talk about the Dean's Grant for Student Research. The purpose of this is a research grant providing funding up to $2,000. It's awarded to students, masters or doctoral level, who submit the strongest proposals for research that has educational implications for the field and for their academic program of study at Teachers College. So applications can be submitted as an individual or as a group proposal. However, the funding remains capped at $2,000 and will be split evenly among applicants. Um, again, the number of grants awarded is depend dependent upon annual funding, but funding for travel this year will not be considered uh, due in part to COVID-19. To be eligible as a recipient of this award, you must be actively registered for both the fall 2020 and spring 2021 terms. And uh, as far as funding goes, there is a budget outline that is required with this proposal. And uh, grant funding, specifically our stipends, cannot cover the cost of purchased equipment. So you might need to loan it or rent it, payment of another student or researcher, and or living expenses, including food and beverage for students. And there are no exceptions to this. And for this year only, there is a slight amendment to this um, budgetary constraint that travel costs, so flights, car rental, train, bus fares, et cetera, will not be approved because of COVID-19. Out of safety concerns, we do not want anyone traveling. And the deadline for submission is going to be November 15th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time without exception. And the application portal will open the first day of the fall term, which this year is September 2nd. And partial applications, unfortunately, will not be considered for review. And letters of recommendation must be completed by faculty reviewers. Um, again, the same deadline remains for faculty November 15th in order for your application to be deemed complete. The review process, proposals are blindly reviewed by an appointed faculty review committee comprised of one faculty member from every academic department. And they're blindly reviewed against a scoring rubric um, by three committee members. And the scoring rubric is generated by uh, student life. And you might be wondering why blindly is asterisk. We try our best to completely conceal identity, but unfortunately, um, we do have to organize things by uni. So again, um, they will be reviewed by members outside of your own academic department, but if a, if a faculty member really wanted to, they could technically de-identify the information by looking up the uni. Um, under no circumstances will any individual receive scoring information. Um, or score related feedback on their proposals, but you may receive anonymous commentary or feedback left by reviewers. Uh, again, that would remain anonymous for the reviewer's sake, um, and it's not necessarily mandatory or required, um, but we do encourage faculty to give feedback where they can so that you can better your proposal. And you can expect to hear an award decision no later than February 1. Um, you'll be notified via email, and then stipends are processed electronically immediately thereafter um, notifications are sent. And the next um, fellowship that we're going to talk about is specific to doctoral students. So as a new student, you may want to write this down, especially if you're a doctoral student or hoping to pursue doctoral work at TC. If you're a master's student, I do apologize, you can uh, tune out for a little bit, but it might be informative for you uh, as you continue through your educational journey and kind of prepare for your next steps. 
Again, this is close to doctoral candidates, but it's a fellowship um, encouraging applicants to pursue basic and applied research spanning diverse disciplines. It should concentrate on advancing knowledge and show a strong likelihood of being published in the most well-respected research journals in the field of inquiry. And this fellowship um, offers funding to doctoral students awarded in the amount of $6,000 to supplement, sorry, academic related tuition, living, research, or research related travel expenses. And there is a similar grant I will, or a fellowship, I'm sorry, I will mention that the Department of Education Policy and Social Analysis has. It should offer similar funding, um, same amount, and uh, if you are awarded one, you cannot be awarded the other. So for instance, if you are awarded the EPSA fellowship, you would not be eligible for ours and vice versa. Eligibility. So the best way to relay this is uh, it's kind of if you can conceptualize an application schedule. So you are applying usually in the spring uh, in advance to begin the next fall year. So this is a very similar um, schedule. So you're submitting proposals in advance of your anticipated dissertation data collection period. So if you are planning to start your dissertation collection and you will be working primarily on data research um, in academic year 2021 to 2022, you would be applying um, the prior year. So for example, you would apply this year for funding to be applied to your, your statement next year. Um, so you would be applying in February 2020 for funding to be applied in the fall of 2020 and spring of 2021. So the only eligibility for us is that applicants must be on track to hold their dissertation proposal hearing on or before for this academic year, May 31, 2021. And you must be registered to receive funds for the entire upcoming academic year. So if this, if this applied to you as a doctoral student right now, your degree conferral could not be awarded prior to May 2022. The deadline to submit a proposal for the Research Dissertation Fellowship is standard year to year. So it's going to be February 23rd um, at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time without exception. And like the Dean's Grant, partial applications will not be considered and letters of recommendation must be submitted by the listed deadline above, so February 23rd, by faculty, faculty recommenders in order for applications to be deemed complete. The review process, again, very similar to the Dean's Grant, but they're blindly reviewed, again, blindly meaning we try to conceal identity as much as possible, but we use uni as an identifier. They will be reviewed by one faculty member um, from three different departments outside of your own academic department. We do try to pair these as close as we can um, to related disciplines. So for example, if you are studying clinical psychology, we would try to have your proposal reviewed by someone potentially in the human development department who might be more versed in developmental psychology or this, the health and behavior track um, where we have school psychology. And again, under no circumstances will individuals receive scoring information or feedback on their proposal, but you could receive commentary if it's left for reviewers. Again, not required for those who are reviewing, um, but it is suggested that reviewers provide some form of commentary or feedback so that you can enhance your, your proposal. And for this, applicants will be notified in writing again via email no later than May 15th. Um, and award disbursements will credit to the student account after the drop ad period for both fall and spring terms of the respective upcoming academic year, which is why you will be applying in advance so that your award can be applied um, in the coming year. So again, students must be registered to receive the financial stipend and must be registered for the entire academic year with degree conferral, um, again, not prior to May. And another um, award that we offer would be the Morton T. Embry Award for Outstanding Contribution to Student Learning. 
The purpose of this award recognizes student contributions to student learning in the classroom and selected recipients will receive a financial stipend. So this uh, specifically recognizes teaching and course assistants um, who, who assist faculty or instructors otherwise to help in the classroom. And the nomination must come um, for any CA or TA currently serving in that academic term. Um, it is a peer to peer nomination, but faculty and instructors are also encouraged to submit a nomination for any uh, course assistant or teaching assistant who made exemplary contributions to the student learning experience during that term. And nominations must be received by the last day of the term for which the student assisted with classroom instruction. So for example, um, if you are currently serving as a CA or a TA for fall 2020, the deadline to provide a nomination would be December 21st or the last day of the fall term. As listed here, we just covered that, but um, the last day of the academic term uh, is the deadline for both fall and for spring. Unfortunately, there is no recognition right now for summer as it's not considered an officially recognized term at TC. Uh, again, this is slightly different, but all nominations are reviewed internally and the strongest nomination uh, or nominations rather are considered for award and determined by an internal review committee and award recipients and course instructors will be notified uh, via college email or in writing. Um, and they're generally usually notified within one month of the end of the term for which they just served. And lastly, I want to highlight the Teachers College Student Leadership Grant, which is the newest um, grant that we have available to students. And it's commonly referred to as the TCSLG, and it recognizes and encourages outstanding student leadership. And it is awarded based on demonstrated ability to lead change in the TC community for the common good. And applicants should demonstrate leadership capabilities with the following characteristics, including civility, social justice, personal character, and service. The deadline to apply, there are currently two deadlines to accommodate individuals who may finish coursework in the fall term with the anticipated degree conferral in February. So students who will be enrolled for the entire academic year or the spring term should plan to apply in the spring term only. So for the 2020-2021 academic year, the fall deadline is November 15th and the spring deadline is March 15th. And I'm sorry, that's a typo. It should be March 15th, 2021. The review process for this are, um, they're reviewed internally by a voluntary review committee comprised of staff and administrators and the strongest applications are considered for award. And traditionally, awardees are provided a financial stipend in recognition for their commitment to service in the amount of $500. And the number of awards per academic year is dependent upon funding. And with this grant, you can expect that fall applicants, they're usually gener generally notified of their award decision by the end of the fall term. Um, so again, that would be mid to late December. And spring applicants are generally notified of their award decision by May 1st. And just to highlight, uh, recipients of any of the student grants, fellowships, and awards are all invited to attend our Student Leader Award Ceremony at the end of the academic year, which for this uh, current academic year will be May 2021. Uh, I just want to highlight also that with all of these, uh, with the exception of the Provost Grant currently, uh, we will have understanding the application process workshops. So the first will be the Dean's Grant and we will likely hold three sessions in October and those dates and times will hopefully be announced very soon and I encourage you to join so that we can discuss more in the way of understanding the application process, some tips and tricks, as well as um, dive further into the eligibility requirements and budget constraints. So with that, I'm going to conclude. I thank you for your attention. And I encourage you to reach out with any further questions or concerns. Our email is listed there for your convenience, studentaffairs at tc.columbia.edu. And I look forward to working with all of you, and I wish you nothing but the best as you begin your studies here at TC.